Your attention, masters, mistresses. All systems functional for the Everything Geek podcast. Hey, my name's Rich McDonald, and I played David Mason in Call of Duty Black Ops 2. And you're listening to Everything Geek podcast. Uh, hey, everybody. You're listening to Everything Geek podcast. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Hey, it's Leif Gamfert. I played Uncle Ben's killer in The Amazing Spider-Man, and you're listening to the Everything Geek Podcast. Hello, I'm Simon Fisherbecker. You probably know me better as Dorian Moldovar from Doctor Who, or the Fat Friar from Harry Potter. And this is Everything Geek Podcast. Face it, Tiger. You just hit the jackpot with the Everything Geek Podcast. You're listening to the Everything Geek Podcast, bringing you interviews from your favorite films and TV shows every week, and all of the latest news. Here's your host, Rory Williamson. Hello everyone, you're listening to the Everything Geek Podcast. I'm your host, Rory, and joining me is co-host, Scott. And also joining us today is a very special guest. We have Teresa Lian, best known for playing Mary Louise in The Vampire Diaries, Rhiannon Bates in Neighbours, Angelica in Into the Badlands, Nurse in the Cup, Chloe Marks in Stitchers, and June Green in the Becoming Bond documentary. How are you today, Teresa? Hi, Rory. I'm great, thank you. How are you? I'm very good, thanks. It's a pleasure to have you on the show today. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. So getting right into my questions for you, Teresa, can you tell us how you got into acting? Yeah, um, you know, I think I, I got into it a little later than what I guess I, I thought everyone else was doing. I I loved it growing up. I, lo- I was a huge film buff and uh, basically through all of high school, I studied it at school, but hadn't really done anything outside of school. I had this amazing drama teacher who really just took us to a bunch of plays and all these awesome live performance shows and just really sort of lit that fire in me where I just knew I had to do something about it. Uh, But when I left school, I actually then went to university and studied something other than acting because I thought it was the the smart thing to do. But about six months into it, I realized that I was miserable if I wasn't acting. So I I left that and uh, I joined a local theater group And uh, then I started to study uh, performing arts at a different university. And I just got caught up in, I think, the the student theater world there. And I just, I realized I didn't want to study it anymore. I I had to kind of work out how I could do it. And then I found a film and TV school in Melbourne. uh, It's called TAFTA. And they had these awesome classes where I could go and actually meet casting directors, like face to face. And it really just bridge that gap of like not really knowing how to get into the industry and I guess over I think it was about two to three years I I kept going to classes there and eventually I got called in for role after role and it just sort of had to be the right time I guess and eventually uh, the amazing Fia McLeod who's the casting director of an Australian TV show Neighbours she uh, booked me for Rhiannon Bates which was kind of where everything started I guess from there everything just sort of took off and you know when I finished that I then went to LA and was lucky to uh, get representation pretty quickly and I just kind of kept going with that and auditioning until the right roles came along. Yeah it's really great Um, and you mentioned there like you kind of felt like some you just had to like get into it like it's kind of like sometimes the best way to learn is just to do something really rather than keep studying sometimes you just have to like do it. Oh absolutely I, I still think that you know, the, the quickest uh, sort of lessons that I've learned and the most important have been while on set. You know, it's just, you can't help it when you're sort of just, I guess, thrown in the deep end. It just feels like you just, you have to perform. And um, yeah, there, there is no other option. And I think those, those are the times that you really learn the most. You got to shoot your shot. Absolutely. <laughs> Can you tell us how you were originally cast as Mary Louise in The Vampire Diaries? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was that was a fun time. It was like I was in New Orleans actually shooting for Into the Badlands. And uh, I'd, I'd been out there for I think about a month or so. 
and it was the middle of the year it was like crazy humid and I just I got sent this script for the audition and at that time they were just sending out the I think it was two scenes and it was for the role of Valerie uh, I think they were kind of doing this just to get a gauge on the people that were reading and then they sort of placed them in the categories that suited depending on because they had I guess a few characters to cast uh, so I put that down on tape and sent in that audition and as I was on my way back to Australia because I'd finished shooting there and I was stopping in LA just for about a week or so uh, I got told that I'd made a call back but I wasn't going to be in town so I basically had to go to a producer session straight away and uh, just I then also read for the role of I think it was Aurora in the originals and also Mary Louise. So I, um, yeah, I showed up there with like these, like all these pages of script, not really like knowing really what these characters were. And um, yeah, I, I left to go back to Australia and I can't remember how much time passed. I think it was about a few weeks at least, I think, before I found out while I was back in Australia that I'd booked it and that I had to get on the, the next plane out basically because they were getting ready to shoot within a week. So it was it was a pretty quick turnaround and yeah it was so exciting yeah it's really cool and that's something that as well like that does happen in the acting industry like sometimes you'll read for another character and then end mm. up you know getting no role so it's really interesting to hear that you when you went in originally it was to read for Valerie who of course went to Elizabeth Blackmore in the end and you you have obviously played Mary Louise that's something that obviously does happen sometimes you read for a different character first yeah and I think that's the thing you kind of just go in there and you you bring what what you have and then you just have to trust which I already knew you know the creators and the producers of this show they're just they're so amazing and if there's anything they do right it's the casting is amazing and I think that's what I, I just trusted in and yeah you just hope that they see you in that role I guess you know, I was just going to make a quick comment, too. What, one of the things that I just love about that story of how all that unfolded is just the importance of <clears throat> showing up for these opportunities because you never know when something is going to be significant. And you could have been like, oh, it's just another audition. It's just whatever and just not done it or not given it your all. And you did. And then all of a sudden it catalyzed into all this stuff. And it's mm -hmm. just like a reminder for you know, all of our listeners out there who maybe aren't in the acting world but they have dreams and they have ambitions. And it's like, hey, show up. You never know when a chance meeting with somebody or you take this one step is going to change the whole course of your life. It's exciting. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm a huge believer in that. I think in, in any aspect of life, I guess, like it is that thing of just really sort of being your best self. And uh, I think connections and human interaction are so important. Uh, yeah, regardless of whether it is in the acting world or not. Uh, I totally agree. Yeah. Were you yes. a were you a fan of the show itself before your casting? I, I was, yeah. I um, I think even like not even from an, an acting standpoint, I I really always looked for shows that had that kind. Of, I love supernatural stuff. Like I'm a total geek about that. Anything otherworldly, like I'm there. <laughs> so this was something that yeah, I definitely had followed the show before, and I think the writers really gave the actors a lot to work with. And I think that's why the fans stuck around for so long because they're just, they, they don't, um, they don't put people in the show that aren't there for a reason. And I think that's really, really cool. They, um, they're, and they're, they're big fans of backstory and stuff like that, which is just, it's the best to have that to work with. Absolutely. What were you told about the character in, initially when you landed the role? Not much, actually. <laughs> I mean, we, we got given a, the brief character description that came with the audition. And uh, it was one of those things, I think, where they, I, they were probably waiting to see how we all interacted. This Because I came in with a bunch of newbies, uh, the heretic family that came in. We were all kind of waiting to see what everyone brought uh, and how we all were going to get along as characters in the scenes. So it was one of those things where I think I discovered more about her uh, as we went along yeah that makes a lot of sense um i have to ask how did you react when you read the script for the episode days of future past i wonder what that's a <laughs> reference to and found oh. out about mary louise's death oh my gosh um it was mixed feelings you know i uh it's one of those things where you have to take yourself out of it as an actor because obviously 
I loved being there. I loved the people that I got to work with and uh, cast and crew. Like the, the cast were just amazing and so cool to work with people. Like, I guess, cause we're all, not all of us were from the U S so it was like something where we felt like a mini family within a family and the crew were always so supportive. So that was something that I had to like, I don't think I realized until later that I maybe had a bit of a period of mourning where I was just like letting go of everything and everyone. But uh, when I read it, I was just, I think that the writers treated it in a way that made, made it special. And um, yeah, there's, the, the relationship between Nora and Mary Louise, I think, was so important for the fans as well and also the fan base where it's like we brought this same-sex couple to the show that I was aware as the fans were reaching out, like, just how much we, we were bringing to, to some people. And so it was. It was really sad, uh, but there was something in the way that it happened. I thought it was it was kind of beautiful and there was that kind of Romeo and Juliet vibe where I don't think... I wouldn't have wanted it any other way for those two characters. I think they they wouldn't have wanted to be with anyone else. Their love was, you know, painted to be this this eternal, like, meant to be together kind of thing. So, yeah, I think it made sense that that was the way they chose to go out. And so I, I had to be grateful for that. I, I couldn't have asked for anything more. Absolutely. I mean, that is yeah. what makes the... That, that is what makes the death scene so special is the fact that, you know we were introduced to them as a couple and they like died together like by choice you know that they yeah. chose that ending for themselves like that's what made it really special in my opinion oh thank you <laughs> their love is like me and oreos like, you know, <laughs> i'm getting love. that yeah like, you explain no one understands but us <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah meant to be <laughs> <laughs> for sure um what was it like developing the character of Mary Louise over the course of the seventh season? Uh, I think, well, from the beginning, I tried to just go with at least uh, finding out her age was really important to me because I wanted to know just how much life she had experienced and what kind of, I guess, baggage she brought with that. Uh, so for me, I was really, my first thing was looking up uh, gender roles in the 18th century and how, you know, young women went about their lives and, trying to work out what class as well she may have been in because I think that was something that really influenced the way that she interacted with people in the the modern world. Um, yeah, I, and the relationship like was something that was a big, big thing for me and that was something I wanted to focus on. How did she grow up thinking of that and was it okay and was it accepted? And that was something that I... I I already, I guess, kind of knew, but I read some pretty intense um, stories about the way that women were treated when they were outed, I suppose, for being in a same-sex relationship. And yeah, I think it was just something I wanted to see how she came into this new world with all of these ideas of how things were meant to be. That was really important. Uh, and then the rest of it going throughout the season, the, as there was an introduction of different characters, I think I learned more about her in the way that she interacted with people. Like uh, when Julian came in, played by Todd Lassance, that was a really cool thing for me because I thought it was so interesting the way that she responded to him because there started to be this sort of father-daughter dynamic between the two of them that I, I hadn't anticipated. And she was the only one out of the heretics to react that way. So I thought that was really cool and you just sort of see that she was just in this desperate need of validation from so many areas. And yeah, it was, it was very eye opening and uh, super important, I think for her as a character. Yeah, definitely. I mean, especially in, you know, when we're introduced to her, like in the first episode of the season, like we can see that like Nora adapts right away to the modern oh, world. Oh yeah. <laughs> whereas Mary Louise is a bit more conservative. You know, she she's Mary Louise still has the kind of mindset like, you know, yeah, I'm not so sure we should be doing this in public, whereas Nora is like, It's a modern world, let's do this. Let's hold it yeah. in public <laughs> and let's do all of it in public and like it was just so interesting to see that kind of different dynamic in their relationship right at the start so I mean that's what kind of made Mary Louise interesting as well as obviously that dynamic with Julian was just you know the different ways she looked at things the way Nora to the way Nora looked at them yeah absolutely yeah and thank you for saying that 
I love that we're seeing more of that, though. I think representation is so important. And mm -hmm. I think you don't realize how important it is. <clears throat> you know, but me being like, I'm in Tulsa, Oklahoma, right? So I'm on the development team for uh, an LGBTQ rights um, organization here. And, man, they always say, like, man, whenever we see stuff like that, I mean, it, mm -hmm. it, it gives it gives legitimacy to our hearts in a way that you can't calculate the importance of, you know? So I just think yeah. that's awesome that you, that's got to feel good to be a part of that. You know what awesome. I mean? Yes. And yeah, again, thank you so much for saying that. No, I'm totally, when I, when I got the character, I was just like, this is more than, you know, just a, a character in a show. I, I felt like it was at a time where people were realizing that we needed more of this kind of a representation there sure. just for like, and not even just teenagers, you know, I feel like people just want to see a character that they feel they can relate to and follow a relationship that they could maybe lose themselves in and, you know, start to really root for and, yeah, no, I was, it, it felt like something where it wasn't a challenge for me. It was like a total, like, and it just felt like I was super lucky and grateful to be a part of it. Absolutely. That's awesome. Yeah. What was the overall experience like working with the cast and crew of the show? <laughs> um, amazing. <laughs> I mean, I feel like there's a reason that everyone that, you know, even talks about this, they have the exact same thing to say, which is that it just, it feels like a family. You come into this show that I guess it, it had been around, we came in on the seventh season and some of these people like cast and crew have been there the entire time. And this is like years and day after day and hours spent together. And it just, it becomes this family environment and they totally welcomed us, which, you know, it's one of those things where you go in and you're like, oh, how's it going to be? You're like the new kid at school, but no, like it was just everyone really went out of their way to reach out to us, make sure we were comfortable. And if we, you know, wanted tips about where to go in Atlanta, like when we went working and stuff like that. So it was just, it, it's, yeah, I think the kind of environment they've created and I, I know like Julie Plerk and the creators and just everyone there, they've, they, they choose people that they, I guess, respect and know have the same work ethic. So they're all there and like, they're very caring and supportive, but they're also there to get a job done and everyone knows what they're doing. And you, you just feel like you can just, you know, trust them with anything. So it was, yeah, it was great. That's great. And what would you say are your favorite memories from your time working on the show? Hmm. Uh, I mean, the first day on set was amazing because well, I always say like, I'm, I'm a fan first, which is like the reason I get into or I got into acting was because I just, I love that feeling of that magic of creating something and collaborating with people. So, you know, stepping into these sets that have been around for, for years and that I've seen on a screen somewhere or that like, I just, I know how many stories have developed in these sets. It just, it felt like this, like I was being led into this secret world. So that was amazing. And, uh, Probably the first day that the heretics all got together in the one scene. I I know when we shot stuff outside, which was like where we go to, um, there's like a ceremony going on and we start the, the fire in the sprinklers and that was really cool because we had all these extras dressed up with like all these wounds and stuff. It was just, it was so cool. Um, yeah, I think just meeting, meeting the heretic family, everyone that played them was just really, really cool. Uh, we, we realized pretty quickly that we we're all going to get along and it was just, it kind of just continued throughout the season. So yeah, my, my best memories are the people and the, the friends that I made that I am still in touch with now and we're still catching up and hanging out like wherever I am, if it's in LA or Atlanta, I've always, I'm always checking in with them and hanging out with them. So yeah, those would be my best memories. Yeah, that's really great. Um my final question for you, Teresa, do you have any upcoming acting roles or any other projects that you would like to talk about? I mean, I do have stuff coming up that I'm not allowed to talk about yet. <laughs> so it's, um, She's in the next Infinity War. <laughs> yes, look out. Um, no, there's, there's something that uh, I, we shot last year and it has yet to be announced or released, so I can't really say anything on it. Uh, I can say that it was crazy fun to shoot we shot it in New Zealand and uh I guess what I can say about it is that it's set in another time and another place and my character is based on uh, a real person 
and she, uh, hmm, what can I say? <laughs> um, she was basically pretty much just as devoted to family and willing to do anything for family um, in a very lethal way, kind of in line with Mary Louise, but possibly a little more so. And yeah, I'm really excited for that to come out. And as soon as it does, I'll be shouting it to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> That's really great. Um, well, I'll be sure to keep an eye out for more info on that. Um, that's all of my questions to you, Teresa. Thank you for answering them. And I'll let my co-host Scott ask his now. Awesome. Thank you so much, Rory. You're welcome. Woo! All right. All right. Yeah. Here we go. Uh, now, it, I'm sure it comes as no surprise that me and Rory are quite different in personality. <laughs> and that's why we're great co-hosts together you know it's a little yeah. little variety here yeah. so these are the things that i th these are things that i really think about and that my burning questions that keep me up at night whenever mm -hmm. i do these kind of interviews so um whenever i talk to <clears throat> actors I'll, I'll often ask this question because uh as someone who studies a lot of psychological and emotional neural like neurology associated with that stuff um, it's always interesting to me how you tap into stuff for roles. And so my question to you is when you have to do like an intense or like heavily emotional scene, like what do you do? Like, where do you go with that? Like, how do you pull from that? Is that something that's really easy for you? Is it difficult? Do you have to kind of tread in uncomfortable waters to get what you need to get? Like, how's that work for you personally? Yeah. Um, I, I think it depends on the character, uh, cause that'll kind of, put me in a place mentally where I'll, I'll find out what level exactly it, it needs to be delved into. Um, if it's something, yeah, I think the way that I work with emotional stuff, it depends on who I'm working with as well. Sometimes you can just be on set with someone who, you know, the, the energy between you both and you understand the story and what's going on. It's just, it's so strong that you don't really need the preparation. Like you just jump into it and it kind of takes on a life of its own. And those are like some of those, you know, the most, electric moments where you kind of walk out of it going I don't even know what just happened but you know it just we kind of convinced ourselves the scene was happening and it just it went there uh but there are also times where I guess I like I don't like to go into a scene like that unprepared so yeah, yeah for me I'll I'll kind of depending on the character it's something where I'll either relate it to something of myself or how I would feel within a certain situation and yeah, I guess I am a, a fan of uh, substitution is kind of a technique that I do rely on. Depending on, yeah, what, what the scene is and the extent of it, it'll be either real or imaginary substitution, really. So you don't have someone right off camera cutting up onions? <laughs> I mean, only if it's really necessary, but... <laughs> no, I, I have had moments, um, I think probably on like a couple of short films or something where... They've needed to do this. There's like this, I don't know if it's like a menthol blower thing or something that they put on, like they blow it literally directly onto your eyeball. Um, but that can be really dangerous. And like that's if they really just want that one shot of like a single tear coming out or something like that. And that, that comes down to a tear. Yeah. So I'm like, uh, that's more of a technical thing and they know what they want. And if you really can't get there, okay. But I prefer to, yeah, I, I it's like a not, every actor's nightmare, I think, to show up on set and not be prepared. So I always do, you know, everything I can to make sure that I'm in that place that I need to be for the day. That's why I think the the whole, you know, that logo, if you will, quote unquote, for acting is the, you know, the happy mask and the sad mask because they are so interrelated, you know, and they oh, yeah. power each other, you know. Yeah, definitely. That's the thing. And like, I know that some people like feel like they, depending how method they go, where it's like, you know, to be really in like a real solemn state for the whole day. Some people, it, it works better if they just don't even think about it. And then it's just jumping into the scene. So it, yeah, it just depends. Well, yeah, that, that's, that's awesome. I appreciate you explaining. Um, the second question I had was which character of all the characters that you have played has stuck with you the most or which has resonated with you long after you're done with the role because it's like you're making friends with these characters you know these are people you know and who are they you know so yeah no absolutely yep that's that's one of those things i feel like as much as i try to step into a character and just let that have its moment and walk away from it i like i don't think i'm that good at that i feel like once i finish working on a show or you know with a character i feel like 
remnants of it do stick around, like whether I want it to or not, because it it kind of makes you have to sort of look inward as well, where you, you bring parts of your personality to the surface that maybe you wouldn't in everyday life. And so suddenly these these elements that you, I don't know, maybe don't think you have that, well, socially you wouldn't be able to do that. And all of a sudden you've had this luxury of it being there and not having to make any apologies for it. It can be, that can stick around. So I feel like most of, I feel like every character that I've done probably has left something with me. Uh, but I guess with the Vampire Diaries is something that sort of stuck around for a different reason where I feel like the fans that followed it, they continue to reach out. And I guess one of the greatest things about the show is that it shows in so many different countries and there are still people now that are just seeing the, the, the footage of the Mary Louise and Nora stuff. So I'm still having people reach out about that. So yeah, that, that definitely has a, a stronghold on where I'm at. Well, and I would wager to say, too, that your inability to turn it on and off, but rather to grapple with this person who you're becoming friends with and step into that mental process is what makes you a good act- actress, you know? You know, because it because I think that when you're empathizing with a character, I think empathy is the foundation of authenticity. Thank so you. Yeah. Now, that is something that I've always, because I have tried different schools of thought of what works for me, and I've always found that. I feel like, especially in film and TV, it's it, you can't hide really no. who you are. I mean, you can bring certain qualities and build a character, definitely, but I feel like there's just so much of you that is going to show uh, whether you think it is or not. And so that's something that I've really learned, which is when I get a, when I do start to work on a character, it's like, well, what part of myself do I see in this character? And yeah, how can I work on that? That's awesome. What's your dream role? This is like mm-hmm. any role you want. Doesn't matter in the past, in the future. It can be a popular franchise, a book. What would be your dream role? Hmm. Doesn't That's even have a tricky to be one. You're in love, and Gwyneth Paltrow, and you can do whatever you wanted. Yeah, I mean, I am a fan of Gwyneth Paltrow's work. I, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I mean, she's done a couple things, I guess. I don't know. I'm just <laughs> yeah, just a couple. Uh, I think I'm still pretty drawn to, I mean, yeah, anything otherworldly, sci-fi, all of that. I love it. There's just something about the exploring the unknown and the fact that there's there's absolutely no limitations to the storytelling. I'm always going to love that. Uh, An action stuff I'm super into. I don't know. I mean, eventually I do want to get into maybe doing some comedy or something like that. But it's... I guess I didn't really answer the question. I don't know. <laughs> well, it seems like what you just, you did answer it. And what I heard is I want to be in a Marvel movie because it has Ooh. other <laughs> comedy and action. <laughs> I mean, yeah, why not? What actor doesn't want to be in a Marvel movie? <laughs> Everybody. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, uh, switching gears, I wanted to ask, because um, I know, you know, a lot of people move out to California with the, you know, a dream in their pocket and that's it to, to be an actor and to pursue that. And so you're doing it, you know, and you, you, you've, you've done it and you've broken through and, and you're living your dream and what your pursuit was. And so I would ask just for the people that are listening to say that they have a dream, they're moving toward, what would you say is the most difficult obstacle that you had to overcome in the pursuit of your dream and how did you overcome it? And follow up if you if you uh, forget it, I'll remind you of this two part mm-hmm. question. Again. But how, what advice would you give to someone who is trying to really pursue their dreams as well? But what was the most difficult what you overcame? And how did you do it? Right. Uh, I mean, I guess what was most difficult was I had to make a decision of what my goal was and stick to it. I think it's one of those. Um, I don't know, professions where if you don't give it everything, it's very easy for it to fall by the wayside. And I think listening to other people's opinions was something I had to stop doing. I mean, it's nice to have encouragement, but there are also people that don't necessarily understand why. They're like A lot of people are always like, they're going, why though? Like the percentage of people that are succeeding at this, why would you do this? So for me, the challenge was to stop listening to that and really just... I have to remind myself why I'm doing this and I've been 
through it where I, I did live life without acting and I, I hated it. So I just have to keep reminding myself of I'm in this because I love it and there is no alternative for me, at least not at the moment. I, I love this and I don't want to see a life where I'm not pursuing this. So, yeah, that, that was a big challenge for me, I think, just realizing that I had to listen to my gut instinct a bit more than other people's. Seeing your focus on important. You know, that's what I'm hearing when you're saying is like, you know, I had to realize this is what I want and I'm going to push out anything that detracts from that. And I'm even going to even, <clears throat> you know, decrease my circle of people that I'm allowing to speak into my life if they're not pushing me toward that, you know, if they're detracting and kind of being like, oh, you know what I mean? You got you got to have your core core people that are really supporting you. I feel like that's really important. Yeah, definitely. And that's like before and, you know, while while you're in it, I think it's just really important to be mindful of the people that you surround yourself with uh, because that does find its way into your mentality, whether you're aware of it or not. It's just it's really important to know what you stand for and what you value. And if you can recognize that in other people, I think you're, you're good. I 100% agree. So what, what, what would you say to someone who – is really struggling. They have they have ideas, they have dreams, but they for some reason they just can't seem to like get over that. Like, what would you say to them? How would you encourage them? They were sitting in front of you, doe-eyed, looking to you for advice. What would you say? Um, I would say to first ask yourself why it's so important. Uh, that's something that I think really sort of clears away all the other noise. It's like, what is it that you want and why? And then I think it's, it's important to, you know, look to other people that are maybe doing what it is that you're pursuing or interested in, because it can be really easy to feel like there's a lot of competition out there, but also seeing that someone's achieved it can actually be an inspiration sometimes. Uh, So I would say something like that and not to be afraid to reach out to people and ask questions and really set a, a plan in place of, realistically what can you do now I mean not to be overwhelmed by the ultimate goal I think is a big thing what can you do now that will you know every every day doing something small that could lead you to that path man I love that I love that you know I so here in Tulsa I have a startup consulting business that I do and uh, it's called the acoustic startup and it's that same exact mentality of you know, the idea being like, hey, you you have this idea for a song, and you need you know a drummer and a bassist and a guitar, two guitarists and you know a tuba and whatever you know, but you can't afford all these musicians right now, so you just not do anything until you can. No, you strip everything down and yeah. you go outside with a guitar and you play an acoustic version of it and you see if anybody throws money in. And oh that's, wow! Yeah. And then you, from there so it's doing what you can with what you have today in the next five hours is what I often say yeah you, no I love that you know what I mean and it's mm-hmm. just like you're out there playing you just got to test the concept you got to get out there you got to do and like in your case I'm just thinking back to what you said at the beginning <clears throat> you never know maybe you're playing your acoustic song and somebody happens to walk by that you could never have imagined that just all of a sudden is like hey do you want to play my I don't know you want to open for him my show and you're like oh my god it's this opportunity because you were present because you were in the moment you just never know yeah I, I love it well that's all i got rory you want to take it over baby yeah uh, baby <laughs> <laughs> thanks so much scott it was so nice talking to you yeah so nice talking to you as well i i, I love your heart i think you have a great heart I love that you, um, the, the thought and the intention behind your role um, on Vampire Diaries, especially with the representation. That's something that's really important to me. And I just, I just, I think you're awesome. You're well, cool. Thank you so much. Wait, what happened oh. to me taking over? <laughs> I know, I'm sorry, Rory. Hey, welcome no, it's back. It's fine, it's <laughs> fine. Um, yeah. Uh, so that's all of our questions for you today, Teresa. It's been a pleasure talking to you on the podcast. Thank you. Oh, mine too. This was lovely. Thanks so much, you guys. And hopefully, yeah, hopefully, awesome. Hopefully we can talk to you again sometime. Definitely. I look forward to it. Yeah, we'll look forward to it too. Thanks again for joining us and take care. Bye. 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 Time to wrap up today's show. Make sure to our podcast links 
check out our website website.everythinggeekpodcast.com slash egp check out our facebook page www.facebook.com slash everythinggeekpodcast check out our youtube channel www.youtube.com slash user slash everythinggeekcast check us out on twitter twitter.com slash everythinggeekp Check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash official everything geek podcast. Check out our Mixcloud profile, www.mixcloud.com slash everything geek podcast. Email us at the following email, everything geek podcast at gmail.com. Check out our companion podcast, everything geek comic cast, www.facebook.com slash everything geek comic cast. Make sure to check out the host's YouTube channels. Mine is www.youtube.com slash user slash Destroyers. Check out Scott's Instagram, www.instagram.com slash thatscottaylor. Check out Teresa Leanne on Instagram, www.instagram.com slash Teresa Leanne. And check out channel 1138 where we broadcast live from www.channel1138.com Geek set everyone. About it, and everyone's just like, yeah, 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 over, over there, freshmen. <laughs> no, they were all very nice. <laughs> they, were, they, were, they were very nice and all, um, and uh, and very welcoming to the newbies. But it was, yeah, and I had, I had a great time. I spent a lot more time with and Michael they were Malarkey. All really, really dope. Like, uh, you know, introducing themselves and you know, whatever, like before the scene, you know, whatever we needed to do. It was, it was really cool. It was really, really cool. Um, with everybody, everybody, I didn't get to meet Nina. She was,